So what is it that makes this nation tick and go? Those who look at us from outside think uh, we are an impossible chaos. If you want this nation to become a big business, then we have to make some changes which are painful. If only if we can take a few steps, a strong steps in the next few years, what is possible is truly tremendous. Nations are made because of sameness of race, religion, ethnicity, ideologies, languages. But in that sense, India is in defiance of all those things. This is a total defiance of the sameness. If you <laughs> just go fifty, hundred kilometers, people look different, speak different, dress, dress different, of course eat different, everything is different. But for over ten thousand years we have been a nation. Even when we were ruled by over two hundred different entities, political entities of the time, still we were called a nation. Not only by ourselves, but the rest of the world also looked at us as a nation, even though politically we were over two hundred entities. So what is it that makes this nation tick and go? Those who look at us from outside think uh, we are an impossible chaos. But our chaos is like, if you compare a manicured garden with a forest, those who lived in manicured gardens will feel lost in a forest. But if you don't tend to the manicured garden for a month, it will be no garden at all. But forests have been there for millions of years. So what looks like chaos on the surf surface is a very resilient organization of its own. Not understanding this, a whole lot of people are trying to break that and bring a new, very synthetic level of organization to this country which will not work for us. In fact, we enjoy some chaos, we feel lost if there is no chaos <laughs> <laughs> to make a nation, there are few fundamentals. Three basics are the territory or the geography is a fundamental thing. When it comes to geography, when we started forming this new India in 1947, we made the most fundamental mistake of breaking the geography into pieces, <laughs> three pieces. Not understanding, that this break will lead to a problem that could endure forever. In the sense, I'm not here to give you a political commentary about what happened in 1947 or 48. The important thing is, this has been a business nation forever. Political entities came and went, kings and empires came and went, but the business endured. We were the largest business on the planet. Columbus's, Vasco de Gama's did not do daring seafaring journeys just for adventure. They were looking for the largest economy on the planet. Well, we… nobody talks about hundreds of expeditions which drowned in the ocean, of course. So this was the largest economy and it didn't stay that way because it was a business nation. It was not a political nation, it was not a military nation, it was a business nation. But we forgot this and we broke both sides of the country, which were our trading routes for thousands of years. Forever we had traded through these routes and we broke the trading routes and made a nation because we are a little blinded by our freedom. We broke the country and broke our trading routes and we thought we would somehow survive with our activism. Well, first forty, fifty years went about without knowing what the hell we should do with ourselves because by the time we understood 
that the, by the time the leadership understood rather that to make a nation successful, what is required is not successful politics, what is required is not successful armies, what is required is successful businesses. By the time we figured this out, it was thirty, forty years gone. So now, we are… we can say this new upsurge in India is only about twenty-five or thirty years old. For thirty years, I think we've done a great job. What do you think? We could have done better. We could have done better, that is always in postmortem. we could have done better. But for thirty years, for any nation of the size that we are and the complexity that we are, we've done great. But we're dragging our feet on a few things. As I said, the first dimension of a nation is its territory, territory or geography. The second part is the processes and systems, the laws and mechanics of how a nation should function. In this, we have dragged our feet a little bit and uh, because of this, we still have many systems and processes which were imposed upon us by the occupying forces, where the fundamental intention was control and obedience. We still have many laws and many processes and systems which are all about controlling the citizenry, not about unleashing our human prowess and genius and human intellect to function and above all India's enterprise to really be unleashed. Unfortunately, we inherited a whole lot of them, only now we are paying attention as to how we can change. We have been dragging our feet on this, for this nation has paid a huge price. Though on one level we are the fifth largest economy as the Prime Minister was saying, but at the same time we also have the largest number of malnourished children in the country. So we are both ways, there are strides ahead and there are leftovers behind, we are trying to pull them along but we have definitely dragged our feet on fixing the systems and processes which, we should, which should govern this nation. And the third, the last, but the most important is the people. In the minds and hearts of people, if you don't build the nation, there is no real nation. Nation is just an idea. When we invest our thought and emotion into it, it becomes a wonderful idea. Otherwise, it becomes a nasty idea. Whether it's nation or a smaller entity of society called family. So, for example, marriage if you take it, it's just an idea. But if you invested your thought and emotion in it, absolutely, it could become a wonderful idea. Or it can become a horrendous idea. The question is only, how much of myself will I invest? in that idea. The same goes for the nation. How much of ourselves do we invest in this idea of nationhood? Accordingly, it either becomes a wonderful idea or a horrible idea. We've been little back and forth on this because when we got our independence, we did not do this aspect really well. When we got independence, there was a huge pride of being Indian. Slowly it got chipped away and worn out because we did not establish this idea strongly in people's minds and hearts. We did not do enough work on that, we thought it just happens by itself. Because of this, people took on their own small identities of caste, creed, religion, race, ethnicity, all kinds of things. So we are a bit struggling on these things because we did not do… we did not be the iron when it was hot. Now cold steel to beat it, we are struggling a bit to a point where some people are confused whether they belong here or somewhere else. We have kept these confusions going unfortunately, I think it's time to settle because if this one thing, if we don't settle, that people are clear that I belong to this nation and the only way for me to prosper is to be a part of this and to make this work, if that doesn't become clear in everybody's minds and hearts, taking the nation ahead will be a struggle. So, these three dimensions, all these three we have to settle. One thing is the geography of the borders of the nation has to be fixed and say, this is it, some give and take should happen and there should be no confusion for future generations as to which is India and which is not India. 
whether I'm in India or I'm outside India, it must be clear to me. Otherwise, how will I focus my emotions and energies and how will I dedicate myself to something? This confusion we have left, this must be settled now for taking strong steps for the nation. And the systems and processes, it is very important that we explore every one of them and see whether this is made for free India or this is made for enslaving India, in the sense. Just to give you a sample, for most of you, if you are from outside the country, you may not understand this. Even today, for most common people, not criminals, regular people, even mothers tell this to children, hey, you… you listen to me, otherwise see, the policeman is coming. A policeman is not seen as help, a policeman is not seen as support, a policeman is not is giving you security, policeman is a threat. This is because this is a hangover from the British era. Policeman comes means your life is in trouble <laughs> because he's always there to trouble you. So, these kind of things still exist. We have to change these things that when we see a police officer or a government officer, we must see solutions are coming, not problems coming our way. Right now still most people experience this as a problem. We have been dragging our feet on making policy changes, drastic policy changes will… will cause some upheavals. But if we are not ready for going through that little pain that we have to go through when changes happen, that means we will not make any change, that means we will stagnate. A whole lot of people telling me, for example, GST has hurt small businesses. Yes, it has, I know this very well because they are in all in touch with us and there is a lot of pain. But if we don't make these changes, forever this nation will be a small business. If you want this nation to become a big business, then we have to make some changes which are painful. We are used to working out of our pockets just to trust this money that… I trust my money only if it's in my pocket. Even the bank, I'm suspicious. This is how the culture has evolved because the governments that ruled us were always from outside for many centuries, so we were always suspicious of them. It is very important now the people of this generation and the future generation are very clear-hearted about this, that this is our country and these are our governments and these are standing for us, not against us. This has to become very clear in the minds and hearts of, hearts of Indian people. Otherwise, we will always be half-hearted about what we want to do in this country. And uh, coming to the people, we have 1.3 billion people. Really, if you look at it, that is our greatest strength and that could be our biggest problem. If we have 1.3 billion people who are well-educated, skilled, focused and inspired, we will do a miracle that nobody can imagine possible. But if you leave them unskilled, unfocused, uninspired, then this could be a recipe for disaster. So this is where our real challenge is, whether we will con con uh, convert this human resource that we have into a phenomenal force or into a great problem for ourselves. This challenge, if it has to be addressed, serious policy changes are needed. So as a nation, we are standing on a threshold. Will we have the courage and commitment to take the steps that will make us cross the threshold or will we just sit there? Lot of people have this thing, no, no, we are on the right track. I'm telling you, especially if you are on the right track, and sit there for too long, you will get run over, <laughs> especially if you're on the right track. <laughs> so we don't become a run over country, but we became a country which is on the right track, moving at the right pace. This is important. As I said earlier, this is in the hands of the business. The political leadership can only set agenda, can only make policy, but the real nation happens depending upon how the business will buzz in this country. Well, I know there are difficulties, I know there are challenges, there are problems of corruption, there are problems of variety of things, roadblocks all over the place, but this is our time. 
We can talk about glorious past, it doesn't matter. This is our time on this planet. Whether we will make this the greatest time in history of humanity or we will make it the worst time is all in our hands. There are many challenges, there are ecological challenges, there are nourishment challenges, there are organizational challenges, there is investment challenges, but the possibility is so big that these problems look small in terms of what is possible for this nation. What is sitting in front of us is so big, if only if we can take a few steps, a strong steps in the next few years, what is possible is truly tremendous. Above all, as a nation, we have been always a land of seekers, not a land of believers. Seekers means we have invested in our ignorance. Understanding the intelligence of ignorance is very important. If you identify yourself with what you know, you must understand in this living cosmos, what we know is a very puny little thing. What we do not know or our ignorance is a boundless nature, of boundless nature, our ignorance is really boundless. So, we have always invested in this, that is why this is a land of seekers. In this is the root of this nation. In this, we evolved this nation in such a way, a culture in this country where human genius unfolded because we were always seeking about things that we do not know. This is understanding the intelligence of ignorance, understanding that the phenomena of life is always on full fire if you are in a seeking mode. If you come to a believing mode, you settle down. But when you are in a seeking mode, you are continuously on fire. So this fire we have exhibited for thousands of years, we should not lose this fire because this is where our growth is, this is where our future is. Jago